Let's talk about bonuses first, because um, leave learning is not that interesting, but that's okay. Uh, bonuses are very much like an idea we've met before, namely commission, right? Just by the name, just by the name, bonus, right? What can you tell about bonuses? What can you tell? It's, it's extra money, hooray, more money, right? Now, why would an employer like give bonuses to their employees out of the kindness of their heart? Really? They Why are they doing incentive. this? Incentive. It's an incentive, right? And that's exactly what commissions are about. Do you remember that? We're about trying to incentivize high performance. And so bonuses are like commission because they reward high performance of different kinds. Okay. Now, question. You, you're the employer, you're the boss. Why might you choose bonuses rather than commission. What would make this maybe more advantageous in your particular context to this? Okay, number one, you might say, well, you know, it's not going to ebb and flow with the seasons, right? Like, oh, we have a good time of sales, a bad time of sales. So maybe you'd say stability. That's a plus. So want to give me another one? There's a few I can think of. Okay, good. So, you know, we we're talking commission, right? We kind of just assumed that everything is about selling stuff. But there's kind of lots of jobs where you're never in the position of selling something directly. You just work for your company, you produce a product or you do a service, and it has nothing, you never get anywhere approach to, close to, oh, these are my, my sales for the week, right? Someone want to give me an example? What's a job that has nothing to do with that? Teacher. Uh, teacher, I don't sell anything. Um, it's worth saying, like, some people have said, yeah, you know what? We want to reward really great teachers with some kind of merit pay. And they try and do something like a commission, and they tie it to, well, student performance. Like, if students do better, then teacher gets paid more. I'll let you have a think about the social implications of that, and why, why teachers around the world hate ideas like that. Interesting. You'd, you'd think they wouldn't be against being paid more, but you have to think it through. Because, like, if your, your children are dumb, <laughs> your children. And that <laughs> what a very nuanced, politically correct way of saying it. Um, now, like I said, I think the basic problem is um, this is irrelevant to certain jobs, right? Like if you're an accountant, or if you're a garbage collector, or if you're there are lots of things where you don't sell stuff. So therefore, they're different because primarily they, they have nothing to do with sales, and they are usually therefore. An annual percentage of salary. Okay. So there are ways that this does connect to sales, just kind of less directly. So for instance, um, a company might be, okay, I'm on the IT team for a company that does sell stuff, right? But I'm not, I'm not the person doing the sales. But if I'm doing my job well, then someone else is going to sell more stuff. So our company will have like a sales target. We want to grow by 10% this year. And if as a company, we do that successfully, it's like, woohoo, we all get an extra 15% at the end of the year. It's doing it's that good. same reward thing, but it's a less tit for tap kind of like, it's, it's not as mechanical as this. I sold more this week, I sold more this week. Okay. It's a bigger picture. So that's the way bonuses work. They tend to attach to salaries. So it's like, okay, I earned $20,000 per annum this year on my part-time job and my my bonus on top of that will be 10% of 20,000, which is 2,000. So my total income is 22. Okay, very good. All right, now, uh, it's a bit different, but it, it's similar because of this little bit in here. Leaf loading, we kind of mentioned this idea before without doing the exercise. Does anyone remember what leaf loading is about? It's not taking all day and you get still paying. Very good. You take, you go on your four weeks annual leave or whatever it is. Not only do you get continually paid, you actually get paid more, yeah. right? Now, this is kind of weird, right? It's sort of, if you want to think about it this way, rather than getting paid the same amount every week, it's like we get paid a little less all the way through the year, and then we get a bit of a, sort of like a fat amount of cash at the end, or whenever we take out. It's a way to solve the problem of, and this is kind of, um, this is actually like almost everything in the financial world is trying to solve the same problem. It's solving the problem of having the right money at the right time. Why do you think people would not like to actually just get paid more all the way throughout the year and not have leave loading? Any suggestions why people wouldn't want the money sooner? They actually want it specifically and then it's bought it? So when they want to, because you spend more on holidays? Okay, because if you're on a holiday, you actually have higher expenses, right? Not only there's the 
um, plane ticket or whatever, but accommodation and you're just gonna, you're on holiday, so you wanna spend more, right? But that's still, even though that's true, that doesn't directly answer the question of why not just for the other 48 weeks just earn more? Can't you just save that? Isn't yeah. there need it for the holiday then probably spend it before? Aha, uh -huh. so if I get the money earlier, if I don't hold off on it and just keep on getting paid the same amount throughout the end of the year, have you ever heard? Come in. Hello, are you looking for someone? And Nick, would you go see Mr. Clements in his office there? Do you know where his office is? You get to it through um, that door over there on the left. Thank you. Um, sorry, where was I? Where was he? About the holidays. Oh, holidays correct, holidays. Why I wouldn't want the money all up. Has anyone ever heard the phrase, um, this money is burning a hole in my pocket? Has anyone heard yes. that phrase? Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because um, it's there, you want to spend Yeah, it. it's like, I've got this money, and then I see a thing I can buy, right? And that pull is very, very strong for all of us, okay? So this is a way of saying, look, if I have it now, if I have that money now, that's the wrong time to have this money. I've got to stop myself, because uh, I know I don't have the self-control, from yeah. having that money early, and just stop and leave it until the right time when I need it. Okay. Um, lots of things in the finance world, just kind of breaking out of um, this specifically, are about solving this problem, but in the reverse way. For instance, how many of your parents have a mortgage? How many of them? Probably. Yeah, okay, I have a mortgage, right hands down. Um, a mortgage is about solving the same problem. How does it work? It's the same problem, but it's completely backwards. Any thoughts? What problem does a mortgage solve? What so a house costs what? Like in our area, you're looking at like <laughs> one million. Well, yeah, like you're looking at like eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand, one point one million, one point one, an insane amount of money. Okay. Now, amazingly, over the course of your life, you get a decent paying job. You will actually earn that amount of money by the time you're like you know, 55, 60, 65, You will earn that amount of money, and not just like, not just earn it, like including all your expenses. Like you could actually save that amount of money. However, you kind of want a place to live before you get to 55 or 60 or 65. In other words, you, you're gonna get the right money, but you're gonna get it at the wrong time when you're, you know, at the south end of your life, okay? So therefore they say, all right, mortgage is a way of taking that money, which you're gonna get over this amount of time, and saying, look, can I access it now? Like, I'm good for it, I've got a job, it's, you know, I've got pay slips, I can prove I'll be able to pay this amount off. Can you give it to me now so I can actually make use of it? I'm putting it into an investment name in your house. Okay? So finance in all different ways is kind of like time travel. It's time travel for money. It's, it's moving money to the right spot in time so that you can use it appropriately. Okay? Like for a holiday. All right, um, one last thing, and someone mentioned it. Lead loading is also a percentage, right? It's a very strange percentage. You should write this down. It is almost always 17.5%. Okay? Now, does that look to you like a weird number? That's a weird number, obviously. Right? Where, does a, where do weird numbers like this come from? Does anyone know? <laughs> Why would the number be so strange? Um, I can tell you right now the basic backstory behind any numbers like this that are really strange like where did this come from? Why not just like a round number? Is that um, trade unions, people who represent workers who get paid this lead, they say we want more, right? And then the actual employers and whoever they stand for, like the government for instance, they'll say, well, we want to give you less. And then they'll fight bigger, and eventually they will come to some kind of compromise. And often the compromise is some weirdo looking number like that. <coughs> Happens to be halfway between 15 and 20 percent. That's probably not a coincidence either. <coughs> so when you see that number, be familiar with it, all it means is you're going to add that same amount on. So for instance, let's think about this. If I have an annual salary of, let's say, let's just do a nice round number, $50,000, okay? What's up, what am I going to earn? You need to calculate this. What am I going to earn per week? One sixty one. One sixty nine. That sounds better. One sixty one point five. Four. Five four. Three eight. No, so that's going to work. Five four. Five, four. Yeah, that okay. Five, four. So that. Well, specifics. Yeah, that is per week. week. Okay. So what's going to happen is, generally speaking, for four weeks of the year, those four weeks you take annual leave, you're going to get that plus. 17.5%. You have two ways of doing this. I could work out, or well, what is, can you work out for me? What is 17.5% of 
How's that? Oh, 168.27. 168.27? Yeah. Does that round correctly? Yeah. Okay, you guys happy with that? So what I can do is I can take that and I can just add it on, right? And then I can multiply by four. Alternatively, I could take this, right? And I can incorporate the leave loading with the amount that I'm supposed to get paid, which is just 100%. So I could take this and instead of multiplying by 17.5%, I can multiply by 117 and a half percent. Okay, can you go ahead, go ahead and do that? Just pop it into your calculator, right? You can see what that's doing is it's including this and this kind of all in one here. Okay, both of them are five. That's but it's so just five. All right, so someone want to give me a number? Um, 1,000. 1,129.81. Okay, great. Oh, there you go. So you can see, I would have gotten that number had I added this to this, okay? But I've just kind of gone directly there, right? Just like in previous cases, if you're saying that, if you're doing that, well, you should state it. Like that number, um, that number, shouldn't come out of the blue whichever path you go through the question, okay? Anyone want to clarify it? Any bit further? Um, yeah. Yes, Why is it 117? Yeah, great question. Okay, so in some ways, I've kind of seen a little bit. This 117 and a half actually comes from two numbers, right? It comes from 100% plus 17 and a half percent, right? So here is your leave loading, there's the extra bit. And here is just what you're supposed to get paid anyway. Like the full amount, that's what 100% means, okay? So 117 and a half percent means the full amount and the extra as one big pile. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, so you're, you're multiplying by 117. 